Okay, this is a <clears throat> 1987 PowerPlay XLT 185. Just finished doing the Holly Sniper conversion, so got rid of the uh, Rochester Quadrajet that was on here. Put on a Holly Sniper Quadrajet. It wasn't as easy as a bolt on affair as I initially thought it might be, but really wasn't too bad. A um, couple of things. Uh, I had to make a custom throttle cable bracket uh, because the Mercruiser one doesn't work and there's no throttle stay that comes with the uh, the Holly. Um, hard Marine riser plate with the wideband oxygen sensor in it. Uh, I did not opt to buy the the kit that comes with it so I could kind of piece together some of my own components. Uh, I'm using an Aeromotive fuel pressure regulator. Here you can see where the coolant temp sensor goes in and I also ran a T so I can run the stock coolant temp sensor. I know it's a deadhead. Uh, we'll test and see if we start having funny readings and if I need to I'll figure something else out. But besides the coolant temp sensor, wideband oxygen sensor, you've got this seven pin plug here that basically has your powers, uh, your power and ground, um, has your, uh, the blue wire runs the relay for the fuel pump, the yellow wire goes to coil negative, so I'm still using the Thunderbolt 4 ignition system, may eventually change to uh, have the Holly control the ignition and just upload a map that is similar to the Thunderbolt 4. Uh, one of the benefits there besides simplification uh, would be that I would get a rev limiter out of that which uh, this boat currently doesn't have with the Thunderbolt 4. I believe Thunderbolt 5 has a rev limiter. There's also a 10 pin plug which I just have no wires coming out of right now so I just have the empty plug plugged in to protect the terminals. That is for future in outs uh, to the Holly if you decide to, to do anything in addition. Um, as far as plumbing, uh, it wasn't too difficult. So you can see the Holly has a fuel fitting there and a fuel fitting here, and either can be inlet or outlet. Um, so what I've got is my fuel comes in here runs through the stock fuel water separator from there comes up goes into the front of the holly and then out of the back runs to the fuel pressure regulator and then the bottom of the fuel pressure regulator runs to uh, the return hose which runs to the front of the boat uh, to the tank let me crawl up in there and show you what we got there so for the return Hard Marine sells this fitting that you can put in line with your fill hose so you don't have to drill and tap into the tank. So that's what I used was uh, that fitting. Just cut a little one inch section out of the fill hose, uh, hose clamped it in, and that seems to work. Also, by not buying the kit, I did not get the fuel pump, so I bought a Walbro 255 inline, and it's mounted behind my uh, glove box here, so won't be able to see it uh, in this video. One other thing on the Holly, uh, you get this additional plug, um, comes with a pendant, like a little touch screen. And that plugs in there. Right now I've just got it routed through my side panel. The cable isn't long enough so I've got to make a new cable. Um, but my plan is to mount it right here on the dash and have the wire tucked going through this blank switch here. And then all my other gauges should still work as expected. So yeah that's kind of a a quick breakdown. Oh, I guess let me show a little more of the wiring. So from that seven pin plug we talked about earlier there, I routed the wires around and down here on my battery switch panel, I've got the inline fuse 30 amp for the Holly system 
and the relay that controls the fuel pump. So, um, the wiring harness that comes with the Holly kit is really not very long at all. I had to add about 16 feet of wire um, to get the plugs where I wanted them, the fuse and relay where I wanted it, and, and everything else. Um, so, again, it's not truly a plug and play, but it seemed like if you have a little bit of fabrication skills and you know some time to extend wiring harnesses and things like that um, it, it seems like a good kit so far so today we're going to go out on the river and run it um, i've run it on the hose two times now in the driveway and i'll fire it up here again in a minute for the video but hopefully this will just make it start easy I'm an EFI guy, I, I'm a Honda guy at heart. Uh, these V8s are a little new to me. Um, but yeah, I've got a, a Honda Civic that has um, a tunable ECU in it. So I'm familiar with, not familiar with Holly software yet, but I'm familiar with EFI tuning. So hopefully it shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, got the hose turned on, so I'm gonna turn on the blower, even though we got the deck up. Uh, key on, we'll hear the, or I will be able to hear the fuel pump run. And I'll show you, with the fuel pump running, it gets up to 60 PSI. It runs for five seconds when you start it up and then um, depressurize until you're running. The Holly screen, it's showing that it is connected, but nothing's running, so uh, let's see. That's all good. Here we go. So it's not going to enter closed loop long term or learning until the boat really warms up. Uh, I put a 160 degree thermostat in it. Originally it had 140. So um, hopefully that will allow it to get warm enough to actually start doing the closed loop and learning to run better. So it should start and run better the more I use it as it learns. at idle. Uh, that's with the vacuum source hooked up. get out on the water today and do some testing. All right. <laughs> 